Right, we're on the hours, so I think we will uh, make a start. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to this webinar of the IFRS Foundation regarding the consultation paper on sustainability reporting. I'm Lee White, and I have the privilege of being the Executive Director at the IFRS Foundation. The purpose of this webinar is to create an opportunity for engagement regarding the consultation paper on sustainability reporting. After my welcome, uh, we will have an overview session for approximately 10 minutes covering the key elements of the uh, sustainability paper. And that will be then followed by a moderated Q&A session of approximately 35 to 40 minutes. Thank you to those that have already submitted questions. We have those. Um, and please take the opportunity, if you wish to uh, send a question in via the webinar, please do so. Uh, please bear in mind uh, that we have approximately 1,700 registrants on this uh, webinar. So my team will do the best they can to pull out the key themes uh, from the questions that are submitted. The consultation paper was published on the 30th of September, and you have until the 31st of December to provide your responses. During this period, the trustees are listening and learning. They have proposed 11 questions, and they are inviting your comments to those questions. Now, let me please uh, take the opportunity to do the introductions. We have two uh, IFRS Foundation trustees joining us today. The first is Lucrezia Reichling. She's a professor of economics at the London Business School, chair and co-founder of Now Casting Economics Limited, chair of the European Corporate Governance Institute. She has a PhD in economics from New York University and previously was the director general of research at the European Central Bank. Lucrezia is the chair of the trustees task force on sustainability reporting. Joining her today is Teresa Ko. She's Freshfields Bruckner Derringer's China chairman. She was founding partner of Freshfields Asia Equity Capital Markets Practice, non-executive director of the Securities and Futures Commission in Hong Kong, a deputy chair of the Hong Kong Takeover and Mergers Panel. And Teresa has a master's degree in law from the University of Cambridge. Teresa is also part of the trustees task force on sustainability reporting. So with that welcome and introduction, may I now pass uh, to Lucrezia, who will provide the overview of the key elements of the consultation paper. Thank you very much, Lee, for the introduction and uh, good morning, uh, good afternoon and good evening uh, to everyone. Um, first slide, please. Um, the purpose of uh, the consultation, uh, as Lee has already mentioned, is to identify the demand from stakeholders in the area of sustainability reporting and understand what the foundation could do in response to that demand. This initiative uh, has to be understood in the context of the IFRS Foundation's five-year review of its strategy, which started in January 2019. The trustees, as Lee mentions, are providing a 90 days consultation period consistent with previous invitations to comment on the IFRS Foundation's strategic <laughs> reviews. The document uh, is the result of a long process involving pre-consultations to stakeholders, exchange of views with trustees and the ISD, the input also of a high-level advisory group uh, chaired by Peter Pratt, former executive board member of the European Central Bank. Let me highlight key elements uh, of the design of the paper. The involvement of the IFRS in sustainability, in sustainability reporting must be demand-driven. We propose a number of options 
but we will not expand our remit unless there is a consensus internationally that we should. The paper formulates a number of high-level questions uh, in a hierarchical order. The first one is whether there is a need for a global set of internationally recognized sustainability reporting standards. If yes, the second natural question is then, should the IFRS Foundation play a role in setting these standards and expand the standard setting activities in this area. I will return to the logic of the questions and the sequence uh, in a few minutes. So there are also specific questions in the document on how we could proceed and the different options. Oh, and most important, there are questions on what are the key requirements for success should we go ahead. Second slide, please. Let me now talk about our funding in pre-consultations. These pre-consultations, as I said, inform the, the paper that uh, uh, you are asked to comment on. First, we found that the demand for sustainability reporting is growing, uh, and so is the demand for consolidation. A lot of important work has been done in this area by various organizations, but the landscape is fragmented with many different metrics now available for companies to consider, often inconsistent or not comparable. Second, the standard setters in this area are also calling for harmonization, and they have promoted a number of initiatives to you know, progress in this respect. And uh, the next stage, uh, everybody recognize, uh, should be uh, you know, to uh, get uh, a framework uh, so as to achieve global auditable standards. So there is a demand and a supply side uh, problem, as the slides mentioned, and the need for consistency in reporting and comparable information. Slide fifth, please. In this context, uh, we have identified a call for the IFRS to play a role. See, for example, the quotations from the IFAC, the IFRS Foundation uh, with an enhanced remit and composition should create an international sustainability standards board. That was a quote from IFAC 2020. Or Accountancy Europe, a sustainability standard board could be established within the current IFRS Foundation structures. It would be overseen by the FRS Foundation trustees, Accountancy Europe 2020. Now, we are assessing uh, these uh, suggestions more widely and, uh, uh, you know, with this public consultation. And, uh, you know, we are especially, you know, testing uh, the reasons that have been put forward of why the FRS play a role in this. I will state three reasons. The first is its governance, combining the input of regulators through the monitoring board, but also the input of the private sector. The second is its reputation in standard setting and the EU processing. And the third is the possibility of maintaining the connectivity in financial account standard setting through you know, the connection with the ISB. And this is you know, the structure that you see in these slides uh, you know, suggests uh, this kind of logic. Slides. Four, please. So, uh, uh, but every expansion that uh, uh, the FRS remit uh, carries the risk, so we need to be clear about conditions of success. But before I, um, I talk about that, let me just uh, uh, describe the high-level options that we are considering in the, in the consultation paper. There are basically three options. The first is to maintain the status quo. The second is to act as a facilitator of existing initiatives. And the third, which is the preferred options that we're suggesting, is to create a sustainability standard board under the umbrella of the FRS. So within the FRS Foundation governance, alongside but separate from the AISB, but providing that connectivity uh, with financial reporting, as I mentioned, and of course, uh, building uh, on the work uh, of uh, existing sustainability initiatives uh, and standard sectors. Now, as I said, uh, you know, this, uh, if we were going to go for option three, we have to be mindful that, uh, you know, there are also risks involved 
And so we have to state, uh, and it's important that you comment on the requirements for. So, so let me state some of these requirements. Achieving sufficient global support, demand driven, as I was saying, working with regional initiatives. Uh, you know, different jurisdictions uh, have different level of ambitions in this area, and they're going ahead with their own uh, initiatives. So we need to coordinate and to build also on them. Ensuring adequacy of the governance structure, achieving appropriate technical expertise, achieving a level of separate funding required for, for this new board, effective synergies with financial reporting, ensuring current missions and resources, uh, that the current missions and resources are not compromised. Let me now go to more specific issues, which I think are key uh, in order, you know, to, to kind of to push this conversation. Um, the consultation asked to comment on the scope of uh, sustainability. We recommend to start with a climate first approach because we recognize that this is the most urgent and this is also the feedback we got in pre-consultation. But we also recognize that other aspects of sustainability are important and probably related with, uh, uh, with the climate uh, sustainability aspect. So we remain open, so we recommend to start with climate first, but to remain open to expand the scope at a later stage. There is also a discussion and a call for comments on the approach to materiality. We recommend to keep our investment focus uh, on this respect, uh, so to focus uh, on uh, the climate, uh, climate risk, uh, with, you know, the impact of climate risk uh, on, uh, uh, on the value of the companies, so that's our investment focus. But we also recognize that uh, the, uh, the risk to the company and uh, the risk that the action of the company uh, implies uh, for, for, for the environment uh, uh, are related so that this double materiality has to be considered seriously, but we recommend to start with uh, single materiality first, uh, remaining open to build knowledge uh, on the connection between uh, the single and the double materiality, and finally to achieve assurance. Let me stress that the FRS would go uh, ahead with the Sustainability Standard Board. This board will build on the important work of the main standard setting organization. I mentioned those uh, uh, already, but let me go to the next, uh, go to the next slide, slide, please. So uh, I want to mention them explicitly here. So I'm talking here about uh, the, the work of the task force uh, of the, uh, the climate related financial disclosure, the TCFD, the work of the International Integrated Reporting Council, the Climate Disclosure Standard Board, the Global Reporting Initiative, the Sustainability Account Standard Board, the CDP. So it is inconceivable that the new board will not start uh, Build, you know, build on the basis of the work that has already been done by this organization. Uh, moreover, we recognize that in this area, different jurisdictions, as I already mentioned, may go at a different speed because of different specific features of legislation and public policy. So, uh, in that sense, we believe that uh, uh, you know, uh, if we were going to go ahead in becoming the global standard setters. This effort of establishing global standards should not be in contrast with the heterogeneity and possibly higher level of ambitions of, of certain countries or jurisdictions. And uh, so it is important uh, that uh, the connectivity and congruence uh, of the core standards with broader and possibly more ambitious standards is guaranteed in a flexible framework. That's what we mean by providing a global a platform for regional initiatives. Now, let me go back to the question and the general specific order. The slides, please. So, as I said, the questions have uh, a kind of general specific logic. First, is there a need for global sustainability standards? Second, if yes, should the FRS Foundation play a role? If yes, is a new sustainability standard board within the FRS Foundation an appropriate approach? and what are the views on requirements of success, which I already described. Let me finish with uh, 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 
description on the timeline. Uh, the consultation paper was published on the 3rd of September. We are now in the middle of the consultation and we have promoted a number of outreach events. This will go on until the end of December, the 31st of December, where the, the, there is a deadline for comments. And then in the first quarter of 2021, there will be a phase in which we will analyze the comments we have received and further the discussion with the trustees. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Lucrezia, um, uh, for providing that overview of the key elements of the sustainability reporting paper. Uh, now, if we may move to uh, the moderated question and answer session, and I think some of that will um, uh, dive a little bit deeper into some of the areas that Lucrezia has, has just covered. So as I indicated, um, we've already received quite a number of questions leading up to this webinar, but there is an opportunity if you wish to submit questions, please do so through the, uh, the platform and the team will do the best to pull the, the key themes together. Um, now, if I may come to you first, uh, Teresa, and um, I look to you regarding uh, some some questions to tease out a little bit further some of the thinking that um, uh, the trustee certainly did, both at task force level and at the full trustee point. Uh, I heard Lucrezia use the term about it being a demand-driven process, and I would welcome your thoughts about the meaning of that and what does it actually encompass when we hear that term uh, demand driven. Uh, Lucrezia, you might, uh, sorry, Teresa, you might be on mute. Just. All good. Thank you. Thank you, Lee. Uh, maybe a little bit about the background of how this uh, consultation came about. Um, you have already heard from Lucrezia that uh, this consultation is undertaken in the context of IFRS Foundation's five-year review of our strategy, uh, which started in January last year. Now, as part of that consideration, uh, several stakeholders suggested to us that IFRS Foundation should get involved in sustainability reporting, given our proven track record in um, setting global financial reporting standards. So we have prepared this consultation paper and you will see that question one captures this demand driven approach. In fact, we are asking you is there a need for a global set of internationally recognized sustainability reporting standards? And we are also asking you to tell us, even if the answer is yes, should IFRS Foundation play a role? So you will see that we are extremely keen to hear views from all stakeholders around the world, uh, whether you are from developed countries or developing countries, and whether you are from investors, from academia, from the business sectors, from regulators, policymakers, accounting and other profession, professions, as well as the ESG communities. The trustees want to hear from everyone. Uh, the trustees would like to have the benefit of all your views and all your thoughts so that they can make an informed decision. Um, as you heard from Lucrezia, we are conducting an extensive public outreach during the consultation period, and this webinar is just one example of our outreach. Uh, Demand-driven approach ultimately means if there is no demand, there is nothing more for the IFRS Foundation to do. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Teresa. Um, Maybe if I, I might stay with you for just a little bit longer, please. Just about the current situation, and uh, Lucrezia had shown a slide earlier about some of the organisations that have already been operating and generating very good um, information. Um, it's been suggested that, you know, the existing um, ESG guidance is meeting current needs. Um, so really there's no need for the foundation 
um, to be involved further. I'd welcome your thoughts about whether that's the situation from what we've heard to date, but obviously there's more to listen through this consultation period. Yes, indeed, um, Lee. Uh, maybe the first thing I, I should say again is the IFRS Foundation is not actively looking for a role. Um, uh, you know, we've all said that this is a demand driven process and I've explained just now what that means. Um, however, um, we have heard many who have said that given IFRS Foundation's 20 years of globally accepted and respected due process, and we have a governance model which has, um, you know, you know, gone through the test of times, and, you know, there is international support for IFRS standards. And all these elements could help to accelerate progress to tackle the chaotic landscape that, you know, we've heard Lucrezia say in the sustainability reporting space and to achieve consistency and comparability. So given our public interest remit of the IFRS Foundation, the trustees also thought that we should give this proposal its proper consideration. Thank you, uh, Teresa. Um, this one, uh, this question's come through quite uh, frequently, and I, I might come to you, Lucrezia, if I may, um, on potentially establishing a new sustainability standards board. If it was to be created, the question is, how would it actually be funded? So, who are you asking the question? Uh, that's to you, Lucrezia. Ah, it's to me. Okay, yeah. sorry. You're right. Uh, well, I mean, it is important that one of the things that we say at a consultation, a key element for success, would be that the financing will not uh, jeopardize the current, uh, uh, you know, financial, uh, the, the financing of the ISD. So, we, we see that. Uh, as a key element of success. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, there would be an interest uh, uh, probably for both countries uh, and uh, private sectors as well in the tradition of uh, our hybrid uh, governance model, which, uh, you know, good strength, I would say, is this combination of, uh, uh, you know, government, uh, regulators and private sectors. So I think once, uh, you know, the foundation's results uh, will be clear, I think that at that point uh, we will uh, take care of, of the funding, which of course is a requirement. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lucrezia. Um, questions now coming back in around uh, scope. So I may come to you on, on this, uh, Teresa. Uh, the consultation paper lays out the, the potential for a, a climate first approach. And uh, is there the potential to broaden the scope into broader ESG factors or, or what was the thinking as, as that was being uh, um, developed by the trustees? Um, Lee, you're absolutely right that we propose that the new sustainability board should prioritise on climate related risk. And I think that is, we hope a decision which is easy to understand because it's the most urgent. You know, we've heard people say that, you know, the world is on fire. So, but having said that, um, we do believe that we could consult on other environmental priorities. And, 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 and many stakeholders have actually argued that at a later stage, the SSB might adopt broader scope that includes, you know, other um, related matters, including, you know, the other aspects of ESG, including social and governance factors. So I think the scope is actually quite wide open. And, and again, we'd like to hear from key stakeholders as to what they would like IFRS Foundation to do. 
Lovely, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and the next question and is uh, back to you, Lucrezia, and I know you touched on this earlier, but how do you see the foundation or the sustainability standards board engaging with regional initiatives? Because we are aware that they're occurring in different parts around the globe. Yeah, that, that is a very important point. And uh, as you mentioned uh, in my introductory remarks, um, it is clear the capital market is global, so we need global standards. But it is also clear that different countries do it differently. And uh, the standards are part of broader policies, uh, which, uh, you know, public policy, fiscal policy, monetary policy, legal framework. So, uh, in spite and sparing of a, a complete uh, homogeneity, it's unrealistic. On the other hand, uh, there is a need for global comparability and standards, as we said. So, the way to think about this problem is to uh, think of a set of core standards, which would be nested uh, in a broader, uh, you know, ambitious. Uh, and uh, so connected uh, with, uh, you know, broader initiatives, more, uh, you know, ambitious initiatives. Yes. So the important thing is this nesting uh, aspect, which would ensure the connectivity, it would be the basis uh, for the access potentially to provide a platform where the different regional initiatives will have also a forum to, you know, to compare and build the knowledge. Uh, this is not going to be an easy exercise, and uh, so there is really scope for learning uh, from different uh, initiatives. But on the other hand, the, the global comparability aspect is also very important, given the global nature of capital markets. Understood. Thank you. Um, they're coming in quick and fast now. Um, back to you, Teresa, if I may. Uh, a lot of questions around what level of engagement have we had with regulators or supervisors and specifically IOSCO uh, is being referred to in a number of the questions. I do know that IOSCO has got a, a sustainability task force which is uh, uh, occurring, so perhaps if you could give us a sense around, around that as well, please. Thank you, Lee. Well, the short answer to your question is yes, we have been um, engaged with uh, or engaging with uh, IOSCO. And I'm sure, you know, some of you remember that even back in 2000, um, you know, 20 years ago, I also played a pivotal role in establishing the international regulatory fame framework that allowed IFRS uh, to, to flourish. Um, so I think right at the outset, um, the preparatory work undertaken by the task force has included prior consultation uh, with various stakeholders, um, including IOSCO. And you are absolutely correct that IOSCO Sustainability Task Force is doing some very significant work in this area. Uh, and we were extremely delighted to see that open letter, uh, which actually was published soon after our consultation paper was mm. published. Uh, in which they acknowledge the need for ongoing engagement. So we will obviously continue to engage with IOSCO and their task force um, doing the work in this area. Lovely. Thank you, Teresa. And uh, yes, there is some level of parallels between now and, and, and times gone past, but obviously in, in very different uh, circumstances. Uh, questions coming in in particular, um, regarding reference to the work of the TCFD. Um, Lucrezia, would you be able to provide some reference to any engagements that we uh, in understanding the work of the TCFD, please? Well, I think that the work of the TCFD is a very important, is very important work. Uh, and, uh, you know, it, it's also, oh, it has been embraced by, by several companies. Uh, and uh, so it's, so the TCFD is a task force, so it would be natural to think that uh, some of those, uh, uh, some of that knowledge, uh, human capital cap capabilities will be at some point absorbed uh, by the new sustainability board uh, uh, that we are uh, uh, proposing. 
uh, of course, the new board will have to start, uh, you know, with a fresh view on how to proceed. But it is inconceivable, uh, you know, to think that the TCFD will not be a building block of that work. Thank you. Yes, understood. Um, uh, Theresa, if I may come back to you, we've got some questions coming in, uh, focusing around the status of if there were to be the creation of the Sustainability Standards Board and they were to make standards, the questions flowing through around are they to, to, to be mandatory and, and if so, how, how would that be accomplished? So, it, it, it's sort of getting a bit further down the line than perhaps where we are at the moment, but nevertheless, the questions have come in about whether the standards would end up becoming mandatory. Well, I think this is a good question and, and also an important question, but also an extremely complex question. And I can understand why it's being asked, because if the objective is to reduce complexity and increase comparability, and, and, and then obviously, you know, we haven't touched on the subject of auditability, but it's also an area that, you know, people are increasingly focusing on to reduce greenwashing. Uh, the best way or possibly the only way it, it would be to through mandatory standards, right, make it compulsory. Um, but, you know, notwithstanding currently IFR standards are required for use by over 140 jurisdictions. Um, every jurisdiction makes its own choice, makes its own decision, and the IFRS Foundation, as such, has no power to require anyone to do anything. So we will need to work with governments and regulators around the world to encourage widespread mandatory use of IFRS. We've been doing this, and I think that when it comes to sustainability reporting, I think we will have to do the same, and which is the reason why some key stakeholders have approached us, because um, you know there is definitely a basis for us to do this, because we are qualified to do so. We have credibility with government and regulators, and there is an existing adoption mechanism and process uh, which could be used. Uh, in the fields of sustainability reporting, if there is such demand for us to act. Thank you, Theresa. I've just received a follow-up uh, question to yours. Um, that last one, we will all, with all the countries using IFRS standards, also consider using the SSB work? Well, you know, ultimately it is a question of choice by each of those jurisdiction. Uh, you know, we, we hope that if, you know, it can be set up, then the, 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 the adoption mechanism could be, you know, put into play that you know those uh, jurisdictions will will do the same thing because uh, clearly we expect that there should be a lot of connectivity be between financial reporting and sustainability reporting and being housed under this uh, under 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 IFRS foundation thank you um, next one back to you Lucrezia we've had uh, quite a number of questions and comments about the current work of, of the ISB. I think it's probably best to phrase this question to say, if the proposals of the SSB were to, to occur, would there be impact on the work of the ISB? And what will be the impact on the project of the management commentary, which is currently underway? Well, I mean, the, the, the project on the management commentary uh, remains important, uh, but uh, we think of the work of the new sustainability board uh, as really new work, uh, which would also require a different set of expertise, uh, uh, including uh, scientists, including uh, you know, economists. Uh, and uh, so really, it's a quite different uh, uh, 
type of work. Uh, and uh, however, uh, at this point, uh, the standards for sustainability will have uh, a very strong connection with uh, financial reporting. And so uh, at that point, uh, uh, you know, the work of the new board uh, will have to influence uh, uh, the, the work of the SB. This is why we have to think of the goal in which the two boards act independently, but there is a connection, okay? And this has to be designed properly, and the connection could be some kind of overlapping members, for example, okay? This is something that, uh, you know, needs further reflection. Uh, because everything that is material eventually will have an impact uh, on uh, on financial report. But, Thank you, you know, I think I'm less independent, though, especially, you know, in the in in the standard thing. This is why I think the best way would be to have an independent board rather than to merge everything in the. Yes. Thank you. Um, Teresa, just following on from those remarks of, of Lucrezia around um, potential impact or the work of the ISB, um, we've had a few questions coming in about um, that term that Lucrezia used about the interconnectedness between the ISB and, and if there was the SSB. And I would welcome any thoughts about what you would see as how that interconnectedness would look like and how it might be developed over time. Hmm. Well, as I mentioned earlier, we do think that uh, the possibility of housing both the uh, SSB and the ISB under the same roof, so to speak, um, has many benefits. Um, and one obvious one is the synergies and the interconnected interconnectivity between the two very different reporting disciplines. And, the, uh, and, and at the same time, allowing each to focus on, you know, what they are good at and what they are, what, you know, what IASB has, has actually been doing, right? And, yeah. and we, we mentioned that that work will continue and it's very important that, you know, that will not be impacted adversely or affected adversely. Um, I think in terms of um, interconnectedness, um, we expect that they will be developed through collaboration uh, between the staff of the two boards uh, and especially leveraging on their expertise um, uh, you know to, re to develop perhaps research and and technical synergies i mean for example we can envisage that you know there will be uh, laws and regulations relating to climate change which will which will change over time and, 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 and this may cause an overlap between financial reporting and sustainability reporting. So this is where, you know, expertise from the staff of both boards will come into um, play um, and they, they can create synergies and, and develop, you know, interconnectedness over time. And of course, um, uh, you know, we are talking about people. We need yeah. formal and informal uh, mechanism for communication and dialogue in order to bring out these synergies and I think it's very important that you know those will be given due consideration if, if, if SSB is to be established. Thank you uh, Teresa. Um, quite a few comments coming in around our governance structure um, and, and perhaps if I come to you again Teresa it, the question I see is Will the governance structure of the foundation have to change to accommodate uh, sustainability standards forward? And obviously, there's the provisos if we if we get sufficient uh, uh, demand. Um, what would happen around governance? Uh, this is a very important question. Um, I think if there is demand to establish a new sustainability board under the uh, under uh, the IFRS foundation, uh, I, we will need to review our uh, constitutional document to effect the necessary change. And we believe that that will be that will require a further consultation, further consultation. Um, there is also a due process requirement to bring about this change and um, we are all familiar with the, uh, the the need for a 90 day comment period 
in fact, this is something that the trustees have actually raised themselves because I think they also recognize the need to uh, move quickly. And we expect that the, that work will be undertaken in parallel so that we don't have to kind of wait for another 90 days, um, yeah. you know, to to wait for that process to 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 be done. And um, and and so I think I think, yes, the governance requirements are very much in mind when we progress with this initiative. Thank you, um, Lucrezia. There's some comments flowing through which have a relationship to our current circumstances with, with COVID. And I suppose trying to capture the questions or the theme is, is the thinking or have you heard that this sense of sustainability or the importance of sustainability is becoming less because of the immediacy and the focus on the implications of, of COVID? Well, I would say the opposite, actually. I think that uh, that COVID uh, has uh, shown that we have to be mindful of risks, uh, which are quite different from the risks that we have identified, for example, after the financial crisis. And, uh, you know, there is scientific evidence that, that actually the incidence of pandemic events is very much related to climate change. So I would say that this is uh, actually COVID is a demonstration that we have to see the head, whether the FRS will do it or somebody else will do it, but it is clear that, uh, you know, we need standards and uh, also risk management uh, uh, against this kind of shock. Understood. Thank you. Um, conscious of the time, so I may uh, pose this as the last question perhaps to you. Uh, Teresa, and then uh, I'll, I'll look to uh, conclude the uh, webinar. Uh, the question comes in in different ways, but it's about um, speed of, of the foundation and, and the potential of how quickly, if the demand is present, how quickly could a new board be established and standards published? And I know, again, you know, we've given some indication of timelines and what things could look like, but uh, Perhaps if you could just give some sense of direction around that. Okay, thank you, Lee. Um, well, I can give you a couple of dates, but I'd probably not be able to answer you know fully your question because sure. I think much will be the work of the new board, and it will be really up to them as well. I mean, not wishing to pass the bug. <laughs> The consultation paper ends um, on the 31st of December, and I've checked the diary. Actually, that was actually the 1st of uh, January. It's actually a Friday. So I think the first day that I think the trustees uh, or the task force could meet is probably the following Monday. That would be the 4th um, of January, right? But I have no doubt that we will spend the early part of um, 2021 uh, looking into you know all the responses that we hope our you know stakeholders will yes. will, will kind of put in. Um, the the next date that I can uh, provide is that our next trustee meeting is actually in February. In February 2021, when I think that we will be discussing you know all your responses, and will uh, the task force will present our analysis as well. Um, now. I, the task force and the trustees uh, recognize the urgency and we will move quickly. But as to when the sustain, new sustainability standards will come into effect, you know, it will be really up to the, to the new sustainability board. But I should hope that uh, the whole idea is to build on the excellent work uh, that, um, you know, has already been done by TCFD and the group of five. Yeah. And so, you know, the idea is not to reinvent any wheel and uh, we are not going to start from scratch. So, you know, and, and everybody knows that as, as far as climate related risk is concerned, it is urgent. So one hopes that, you know, we would be done, you know, as quickly as is practically possible. Thank you, Teresa. Um, so we will draw this uh, webinar to a, a conclusion. Uh, for those that are interested, a copy of the slides that Lucrezia uh, presented 
together with a recording of this webinar uh, will be available on our website within the next couple of hours. Uh, we do have another webinar scheduled for, for later today. And again, we have had uh, a strong participation for that webinar um, as well. Let me uh, conclude by thanking, first of all, Lucrezia and Teresa for your time uh, and uh, uh, for all the work that you've been doing on the trustee task force uh, in particular. Uh, I would also like to just thank the team at the IFRS Foundation who have put together uh, the ability for us to do this webinar and, uh, and to thank them. Uh, a brief reminder that if you uh, are, are wishing to submit a response to our consultation paper, uh, you have to the 31st of December. Don't feel obligated, you have to answer all of the 11 questions. Please take the opportunity to put in your views and we would be willing to take those on. Thank you very much and uh, conclude.